problems to deal with the United States of America around the world. Your questions to the State Department were excellent. As an American, I'm embarrassed with the lack of clarity and the lack of substance on the answers you got from the State Department and the USAID. Now, you know me as an advocate for human rights, but you may have forgotten that I'm the first certified public accountant ever elected to the U.S. Congress, House or Senate. So can I talk about the numbers? Because the numbers you heard don't add up. When you discover that the State Department thinks that our growth rate is less than 10% over a long period and as your growth rate in Europe today. Now, think about the fact that there is no visa liberalization. So there's no way for the youngest population in Europe to go west. They're forced to go to Turkey. But why not where there's some growth, like in Germany? That has to be resolved number one. And think about the fact that you have this continuing adversarial relationship between the Serbs and the Albanians, at least at the government level. You heard from the State Department that they said that they see hope in integration, in normalization. How can there be normalization when every opportunity Serbia gets, it says, we will never recognize the independence of Kosovo? How could you have European integration when five countries today out of the 28 are not recognizing the independence of Kosovo? And don't forget who the Albanian people are. They're the most pro-American, most pro-democracy, and the most tolerant people in terms of interreligious tolerance in Europe and perhaps the world today. They share four religions. There's even synagogues. The recent one was built in, in Albania. So you have Orthodox Christians, Roman Catholics, Muslims, and Jews. They intermarry. This is not a reality for the rest of Europe. This is what we should be supporting. These are the people that are the people on 9-11 from Kosovo and Macedonia were crying, walking with candles in the street, while the Serbs, the Greeks, Montenegrans, and Macedonians, ethnic Slavic Macedonians and, and whatnot, were dancing. I just want to remind you, Mr. Chairman, who our friends are in the Balkans. You're continuing in a great past, a great chairman. We started the first hearing with Dante Fussell, a Democrat, then Gilman, then Hyde, then Lantos, and now you. And thank God we have this progression and that America understands that their best friends in the Balkans are the Albanian people. Now, why is this hearing so important? We want to see Southeast Europe integrated into Europe. But the answers you heard, and your questions were excellent, we got very few answers, tell us that unless the United States remains not only present, but active in Southeast Europe, there will be no European integration. There will be something that will happen before that that could create violence again, and I hope not. Nobody wants to see that. The problem is, the Albanian people can only take so much. So let's focus on Kosovo and a few comments on Montenegro. We had a uh, Pristina Belgrade agreement two years ago, heralded by Catherine Ashdown. It's now been almost two years. Very little of the 15 point agreement has been implemented, and yet you heard the State Department say that it's mostly done. It is not. In fact, Serbia has yet to dismantle the parallel structures in the north. Now, what is, I understand your philosophy, and I love it, about self-determination, but there's a big difference in the self-determination that the Kosovars uh, wanted and the Serbs want. Kosovars were under a genocidal maniac called Milosevic, and a lot of that is continuing today, this racism by the Slavic uh, Macedonians and Slavic Serbs, there's actual racism against the Albanian people today. As you know, they're not Slavs. They should have never been put in a state called Yugoslavia. That was the biggest mistake that was made after World War I. So where are we going with this at this point? If the State Department thinks that things are in regular order when Serbia is refusing to recognize Kosovo, 
refusing to take away the parallel structures and whatnot. The other problem the State Department has is that it has been much too involved in decisions that have been made within Kosovo. For instance, there was an election. There was an impasse. People did not want a return of the regime of Hassan Bachi. Many people feel he is corrupt. We could say the same thing about some politicians in Macedonia. But what happened was, our State Department and... Well, I hope not, but it's probable. But the problem is that we have a State Department now that forced the issue, there was a coalition, an opposition, that was trying to regularize things at Kosovo, and now we have a return of the political elite to switching chairs. Now Mr. Tachi is the deputy to Issa Mustafa, who was rated yesterday with the population of Kosovo at 24% popularity, but our State Department engineered that back. Another thing. We, okay. All right. But, and, and let's look at Mr. Tell. He forces the creation of a road that's supposed to cost a billion dollars to connect Albania and Kosovo. It goes to two billion. We need jobs in Kosovo, not a road. That road could have been built by local contractors for half price. And where does he end up? A senior position in Bechtel, the company he aided to get the job. I would say, Mr. Chairman, that we need the U.S. Inspector General for the USA, uh, for the State Department to look at that. 